All right, here's problem 13. It says if n is a positive integer that is divisible by 12 and 16, then n must also be divisible by which of these numbers? Well, all you're really looking for here is what you did in elementary school, the least common multiple, a number that these both can be multiplied that they share. Um, so if we look at the multiples of 12, now remember an integer simply is a positive or negative number that doesn't have a fractional part. Obviously we're not dealing with negatives, so it really is just a positive whole number that we're dealing with here. If we start doing 12 times 1, 12. 12 times 2, 24. Because see, each of these numbers that we're going to do is going to be divisible by 12. 36. 12 times 4, 48. 12 times 5, 60, and so forth. Let's look at 16. 16 times 1 is 16. See, 16 can be divided by 16. 16 times 2 is 32, so 32 can be divided by 16. We're looking for a common number that obviously can be divided by both 12 and 16. So you have 32, 12 times 3 is 48, and you just you keep going. Uh, but wait a second, I don't need to. 48 is a number that both these... 48 can be divided by 12 and 16. We're looking for a positive integer that's divisible by these guys. It can also be divisible by 48 in this case. So notice that's choice C. Now if we kept going, we would see they have another common multiple at 96. But that answer is not going to work because just because it's divisible by 96, or excuse me, because it's divisible by 12 and 16 doesn't mean it's divisible by 96. Take 48. What if our number was 48? 48 is divisible by 48. It's divisible by 12. It's divisible by 16. But 48 is not divisible by 96. So don't try to fall for that thinking that there's two answers. Simply, when you have a problem like this on the SAT, you're simply looking for the least common multiple between those two numbers because you're looking for a number that both these guys can be divided by. There's problem 13 for you.